In statistics, a population is a set of all people, things, or events that we want to know something about. For example, our population might be the set of all people with a particular disease, and we want to know about the effectiveness of a treatment. Or our population might be the set of all light bulbs produced by a factory, and we want to know what their average life is. Or our population might be the set of all free throws taken in an entire NBA season, and we want to know the proportion of shots made. These things that we want to know are called descriptive statistics, very commonly the mean or average, the standard deviation, and the proportion. Descriptive statistics is actually the science of organizing, summarizing, and presenting raw data in a readable and understandable form. So calculating the mean and standard deviation of a population is only part of what constitutes descriptive statistics, but it is an important part when it comes to what probability and statistics are all about. A population's descriptive statistics are called parameters, and these are what we want to know. In the NBA free throw example, it isn't too difficult to find records and summaries online to enable us to know the parameters of the entire population. When you can evaluate or measure every member of a population, this is called taking a census. But we usually can't do this because the population may be too big or it may be too impractical or expensive to measure every member of the population. When a census cannot be performed, we must take a different approach to determining the parameters of our population. We, get, we begin by taking a sample, or preferably a random sample, of elements from the population. We then find the descriptive statistics of our sample, which are called statistics. And statistics have different symbols than parameters so that we can tell them apart. We use our sample's statistics to estimate our population's parameters. But since random samples can vary from one trial to another, there is a degree of uncertainty when using sample statistics to estimate population parameters. This uncertainty can be quantified and expressed through probability. Using sample statistics and probability to draw conclusions about the population is called inferential statistics. And so the big picture of probability and statistics is how we can, in lieu of taking a census, estimate the parameters of a population by taking this detour. Take a random sample of the population, Evaluate the statistics of the random sample. Use these statistics plus probability to draw an inference about the population parameters. Now I could stop right here because this detour is the big picture of probability and statistics. But this diagram is such a great framework for showing how various topics in probability and statistics fit together. I just want to mention some areas that you will hear in classes or books and point out where they fit on this chart without going into too much detail about what they are. Repeating. This is by no means a tutorial or lesson. I'm just showing how different topics fit together so you can put them into some context when you encounter them. We've already mentioned descriptive statistics, and this is where most courses begin. On this diagram, descriptive statistics are denoted by the right word arrows from populations and samples since they apply to both. Data has characteristics. Our data can be quantitative or qualitative, discrete or continuous, ordinal or nominal. Additionally, the members of our population can have one or more than one variable of interest. When we measure or observe only one variable or attribute for each data element, the collected data is univariate for one variable being measured. When we measure two variables per element, such as height and weight, the data is bivariate. Predictably, multivariate simply means multiple variables. Collecting more than one observation means that we might be able to discover a relationship between them. Descriptive statistics includes study topics which summarize a data set succinctly, including measures of central tendency, namely the mean, median, and mode, and measures of dispersion or spread outness, specifically the variance, standard deviation, and interquartile range. We also specify the location of a specific observation or threshold value relative to the others, using percentiles, deciles, quartiles, and the z-score which you will use a lot. These are all considered part of descriptive statistics. Outliers, gaps, skewness, and the overall shape of data distributions are also studied. And descriptive statistics includes topics that present data in a convenient and easy to understand way, such as dot plots, frequency distribution tables, histograms and bar charts, pie charts, box and whisker plots, and more. For bivariate and multivariate data, we also have scatter plots and regression analysis, 
plus the related coefficient of determination and correlation coefficient to tell us how closely our regression line fits the data. And residuals, residuals analysis to help us know if a straight line is the best fitting line because the relationship between the variables might not always be linear. Descriptive statistics, including linear and nonlinear regression, can be a course by itself without any reference to probability or inferential statistics. If you see a course named statistics without any reference to probability, then it is almost certainly a course on descriptive statistics. Sampling is the technique by which we draw samples from the population. On this diagram, sampling is denoted by the left downward arrow. If we sample our population poorly, then conclusions we draw about the population based on the sample can be inaccurate and misleading. Some types of sampling are simple, simple random, stratified, cluster, and convenience. Experimental design is related to sampling in that it's a mechanism by which we get our sampled data, but it focuses on how we determine the variable values, not how the sample is selected. The concepts of treatment, control group, blind, and double-blind experiments are part of experimental design. A random variable is a variable whose value depends on chance. Since we are drawing samples randomly from the population, the measurements we observe in our sample elements are random variables. It would also be appropriate to classify random variables as a probability topic, which is coming up soon. Sampling distributions are frequency distributions, but not of the population or of the sample but of the sample statistics. The behavior and characteristics of the sample distributions are expressed with the central limit theorem, which is very important to understanding how inferential statistics are possible from samples. Probability is another topic that's sometimes a course by itself without any reference to statistics at all. It's the mathematical science of uncertainty, the measure of likelihood of the occurrence of an event whose outcome is unknown. Here is some high level probability vocabulary. A random experiment is a process by which we observe something where the results are uncertain beforehand. A sample space is all the possible things that could happen in our experiment. The outcome is the thing that did happen, the result of our random experiment. An event is a subset of the sample space that we are interested in, and we are usually trying to determine the probability of the event occurring. When a random experiment is repeated several times, we call each repetition a trial. Here's an example. I toss a six-sided die 10 times, and I'm interested in even numbers. The experiment is toss a die. The sample space is one, two, three, four, five, six. The 10 outcomes, at least from the experiments I ran, are five, four, one, three, three, five, six, two, five, two. The event we are interested in is a set of rolling two, four, or six, the even numbers. And the number of trials is 10. So our event occurred four times in 10 trials. Venn diagrams and set notation, including intersection and union, are essential probability concepts, as is conditional probability and Bayes' theorem. Experimental probability applies when true probabilities are not known or are unknowable. It's the number of observed occurrences divided by the total number of trials. This is how frequency distribution tables can be interpreted as probability distribution tables. Theoretical probability applies when true probabilities are known without conducting any experiments. For example, flipping a coin, rolling a die, or drawing cards. The theoretical probability is the number of favorable outcomes divided by the number of possible outcomes and assumes that each distinct outcome is equally likely. Theoretical probabilities are easy to, and simple to understand and do calculations with, so many instructors and books use coins, dice, and cards when illustrating probability concepts. Combinations and permutations are counting rules used to help determine the denominator in theoretical probability because the number of possible outcomes can be tricky to determine. The expected value is the probability weighted average of all values in the sample space. Probability also encompasses the law of large numbers, conditional probability, mutual exclusivity, and dependent and independent events. Also, combining events with AND or OR, which correspond to the multiplication and addition rules of probability, respectively. And of course, probability studies include common probability distributions, including the uniform, binomial, Poisson, normal or bell-shaped curve, the student's T, 
and the standard normal, which is a normal shaped curve with a mean of zero and a standard deviation of one, and is used often with z-scores that we mentioned earlier. Finally, the concept of inferential statistics is really the culmination of the study of probability and statistics. On this diagram, it's the unified arrows from sample statistics and probability. It's how we draw conclusions about the population's parameters based on sample statistics, using probability to express our level of uncertainty. There are several ways to categorize inferential statistics, and here are three main topics. Confidence intervals, hypothesis tests, or tests in general, and analysis of variance, also called ANOVA. With confidence intervals, we are trying to estimate a parameter, often the population mean. We state a range or interval and a level of confidence that the true parameter lies within the range. For example, we can do the math and determine, based on our sample, that, 90, that we are 95% confident that the population mean lies between 46.2 and 49.6. For hypothesis testing, we are, in a, we are evaluating an assertion called the null hypothesis that a particular phenomenon is unremarkable, that a treatment or action has no effect or a null effect. There is a complementary opposite assertion called the alternate hypothesis that we must consider to be true if the null hypothesis is rejected. If the data we observe leads us to believe that the phenomenon is too unusual to have occurred by random chance, then we will reject the null hypothesis. Otherwise, we fail to reject. We never say that we accept the null hypothesis. A hypothesis test can be one-tailed or two-tailed. So there are two types of errors that we can make. A type 1 error is rejecting a hypothesis that is actually true. A type 2 error is failing to reject a hypothesis that is actually false. The likelihood of a type 1 error is called the alpha level of the test. The likelihood of a type 2 error is called the power of the test. Analysis of variance is a technique used to determine if there's a difference between the means of multiple samples. It helps us answer the question, could these samples have come from the same population, with any difference between them simply being due to random error? Well, that is the big picture of probability and statistics. When I learn something, I find it helpful to see how all the pieces fit together. That's really all this is intended to be. I haven't taught any probability or statistics, obviously but I hope this provides some sort of insight or framework to your own class or personal study. I'm Dennis Davis. Thanks for watching.